Thanks very much for the introduction. I'm Ocean and from the Ohio State University. And uh, today I'm here to present our work, Case Job Detection Using Wireless Signals. This work is joined down with my colleagues Vivek and Ken. So, our work actually is motivated by one question. What can we do if we can track our keystrokes using wireless signals? What does this mean? Think about the case. You went into a Starbucks and tried to use your laptops there. And probably a spy comes in, into the shop, and uh, it will, without your notice, you can track what is the piece of your typing just by looking at the way that your fingers move. And you track what is your fingers move so that you can track what is the key you are typing, what are you typing on the computers. In this way, none of the encryption method will work unless you encrypt the method of the way you are typing your words. This threat will come to the security and will affect the way that the how the information is exposed. It can also happen with cell phones. It can also happen with cell phones. For example, if you are in a bus stop or, or a subway stations, whatever you are typing with your fingers can also be exposed and by uh, detected by other users. So, given this is a problem, the first thing we want to say that why is it possible we can detect it with wireless signals? Think about, think about the case as shown here. We have a laptop, we are typing something on the screen. And at the same time, I have a detector. It tries to track the signal happens in the, in the environment. <coughs> A laptop has antennas. If the signal broadcasting from the antennas, the signal coming to the finger and reflected to the receivers, <coughs> and the signal can be captured. And if the finger is moving, and the variation of the signal, if it's detected by the receiver, it can be tracked. Of course, it's hard, because there's a direct signals. So the problem happens is that if we can really detect the variation of these small signals, we are able to track this. Is this possible? And this is a kind of a, in the category of the human motion detection of the category of the work here. It has been discussed in the recent literature, in a lot of papers have done that. And most of them are trying to look at the face information on the track. So most of the common one, uh, they we use a Doppler effect. I think like the first speaker, they also use a Doppler effect to track the uh, face information. So the first attempt that we do is that we try to see what is facing. Can we also do that? Can we also by tracking the face to track the, the finger movement? What we do? We actually give a strong assumption. We synchronize the transmitter and the receiver. And uh, they are synchronizing frequency and we know what is transmitter is transmitting. We try to measure the channel and to see what is the face where we can detect. We ask a user to type 50 keystrokes in one minute. This is the information we get. Looks like we have something, right? Probably there's a 50 keystrokes behind it. So to do the comparison, we need another experiment. We ask the user to keep silent. Let's repeat the same measurement for one minute, but without keystrokes. This is the information we get. I want to say, probably the second, information, second figure has more information than the first one. Why, why is the case? The reason is so obvious. It's because whatever, when the keystrokes happens, is so violent, and the, the, all the movement of a finger is buried in the noise. So at this point, looks we can see that the problem is really hard. The traditional way to find the information from the human motion is not possible. From the technical point of view, if we want to really track the finger movement of the human body, it's, we need a one to two centimeter level of localization accuracy in addition to the human motion detections. It's not about you just move your finger. We need to know where your finger is. And we know that in recent uh, works about localization using Wi-Fi, usually we, we believe the level of accuracy you can get is in a ten, around 10 centimeters or more than that. This is something we are not having. 
<coughs> Another thing is that we are no reason, we are doing is hacking. The transmitter will not help you with hacking, otherwise it's not hacking. Right? So if the transmitter only thing we are guaranteed to the transmitter is it's broadcast signals, can we still track the uh, finger movement based on this thing? Third thing is that we know that the signal is very weak. And this, for the same level of the movement, it can be also generated with other things. For example, people moving nearby, and it will get uh, introduce a variation to the environment. Can we distinguish from the team uh, keystroke from these things? Given all these questions having here, looks like it is impossible. But we still have chance. For, for specific to this question, we have some good points that will help us for the, for the detection. First is that the antennas are on the device, and the keyboard is also on the device, so that the antennas are quite close to the keyboard. In this way, the signal, we can see that the source of the signal and the, 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 the point, the finger movement they want to track, they are closer to each other. It will give us a benefit, probably we can still track. Another is that keystroke have the repeatable pattern. For this, I mean that if you this time you type an A, and the next time you want to type the same A, it is highly possible that for, for a single user, you will have the similar way to type the same keystrokes. That's something I will utilize in our algorithm, and we will show that it is possible. Okay? So, for the how we do that, how we, how we uh, realize this problem, we have two key insights into the method we are introducing here. First insight is that we are not looking at the face information alone. <coughs> Instead, we translate the face to the delay. What's the difference? When we look at the face, the whether it's a Doppler effect or other information, the thing we look at, face only happens in one subcarrier because face are different across different subcarriers. While we are having something, wideband signal transmission like Wi-Fi, the signal span are wideband. We only utilize one subcarrier, a lot of information are ignored. I didn't use, I didn't wear, we didn't use, we are utilizing information. When we, however, when we map the keystrokes to some delay level, and we know that delay will actually introduce from the delay, you can calculate the phase information across the wideband. So if we really can track the delay, it means that we can utilize the whole band, the phase information in the whole band to do the calculation. How we track the delay? This is the example. Assume the transmitter has one antenna, and here's a keyboard quite closer to the antenna. And for the, our hackers, the receiver, we, for, uh, for the illustration purpose, we just first assume it has two antennas. And signal transmitted, it goes through two passes to these two antennas. There's a delay difference. And the delay difference we show, we show here as a notified as a delta T. Delta T is uh, it's introduced because the distance is different from the hand to the two antennas. And assume we transmit some signal of a sine omega t. And uh, it can be seen as a, a narrowband signal, or also we can see the signal on some specific frequency, and it can be also expanded in a wideband signal. When it's transmitted, the first receiver, receiver will be something like A sine omega t minus omega delta t. Compared to the uh, second receiver, it will have A sine omega t. There's a, because of the delay difference, there's a phase mismatch here in the term of the omega delta t. We're still far away from detection. From these two terms, so what? It's just uh, two signals. What can we do with it? So another insight, very important point of our technique is that we introduce a cancellation to represent, to capture the delay effect. Why we need the cancellation? Cancellation is in a way, cancellation is in a way, we subtract the signal. And uh, in this way, we don't care about what is the signal actually is transmitted. In another way, the receiver does not need to know what is the signal is transmitted. From the pattern of the spectrum, shape of the spectrum, and the relationship to the cancellation, we can just uh, capture the effect of the channel, capture 
of the effect of the delays by look at the spectrum. So can we cancellation just based on these two equations? Of course not. These two we have a phase difference of omega delta t. And this term could span the whole two pi phase difference because we are transmitting on a center frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. So it is just like a MIMO receiver. It has a different phase profiles and their phase are independent. Let's more look deeply, more specifically, let's look at the omega delta t. What is the pattern of omega delta t? What can we do with it? We are transmitting on the bandwidth, remember, around 20 megahertz bandwidth. And the phase information of our omega delta t is like something like this. Why this looks so flat? It's because our delta t is really quite small. It's related with the antenna placement. It's in the, le the level of several centimeters. Assume we have a centimeter, 10 centimeter transmission, and this phase difference across whole 20 megahertz bandwidth is only 3, de 3 degrees. It's quite small. Now, the next trick we are going to, to do is that we shift this line to cross with a zero. In another way, we're trying to match the phase of the two signals by a constant phase. And in this way, we, we add a phase phi to the signals. But this time, this signal is quite similar to another signal we received as A sine <coughs> omega t. And then, we do the cancellation. We perform the cancel of the signal between these two. What we will get, because the omega delta t minus r minus phi is quite small, so this can be approximately this is the equation we have. Not to care about omega or cosine of omega d, that's related to what you are transmitting. Actually, we look at the scope, we look at the cover of the spectrum, that's the amplitude of the signal, that's a term of sine alpha omega delta t. When it's very small, the spectrum will be very low. And when it is high, away from the away from the center, the spectrum will go high. So this will be the spectrum we look at. By just uh, do the cancellation, we don't care what you are transmitting. We get information of a trough. And the point of the trough is actually exactly the point alpha equal to omega delta t. We can see we we map the trough location to the delay to the keystones. And delay is just a user to represent the information. The actual mapping, the direct map in the system we're trying to do is a keystroke to the trough locations. Is this sensitive enough? Clearly, what we, where the trough location is where omega delta t equal to phi, equal to alpha, or equal to phi, sorry. So what happens for a 10 centimeter equivalent delta t setting? In this case, we are trying to move, tracking the hand movement. So if the delta t is verified by one millimeter, that's one percentage of the time, one percentage of the delay mismatch. What happens for the frequency? The omega also needs to be changed by one percentage of the difference. That's a 24 megahertz. It looks so promising. That's more than what we need. But this is ideal case. In the real setting, you will see that you cannot do this way. The first is the problem is that, of course, if you check, if you modify the your spectrum, the trough location to 24 megahertz, you are not able to track it. It's beyond the, the band of the uh, fre frequency. Another thing, more fundamentally, is that the remaining signal is too weak. Remember the the gap, the, the actually the the range of the the phase difference is only three degrees. So. When we do the cancellation, actually all of them will go to the noise floor, or it's quite affected by the noise floor. <coughs> In this way, it's, hard, it's really hard to get actually actual trough locations. To deal with this problem, we manually introduce delay to one of the receivers. Actually, in this way, then we perform the cancellation. It is kind of a trade-off. What is the effect of manually delay? We have the experiment of showing here. We add delay of one nanosecond. This is what we're showing the blue line. 
and and we further introduce uh, delays. We can see that with more delay introduced, the traffic location will be more easier to track. Of course, this is a trade-off between the sensitivity and accuracy. As you increase the delay, the sensitivity of the system will reduce. It's a matter of what application you have. And in our uh, setup, we find that 5 nanoseconds, which corresponds to 1.5 meters, this performed up gave us the best performance. Here's the system. I already introduced what the, it does not matter. Because the traffic location where we look at is where the face matches. We only care about face. We can ask the program, we can ask our system to keep control the amplitude between the two signals to amplify the traffic location. We have the algorithm implemented in the system, and in our system, we find that this is a left is an example of we didn't match, we didn't try to match the, the amplitude, and after we try to match the amplitude, the trough is very clear, and the whole converge process is about 18 millimeter uh, millisecond. Another thing is that we have a face. Of course, we need a face. Uh, block here. We need to tune that for the first place. We need to shift the line down to cross to the zero line. But there's another usage of this phase block. So this is related with the environment as we issued in the beginning. What happens? We have a dynamic range uh, of the environment. We have a test to see that can we detect the keystones with the dynamic environment. Have a test event. We have a test with moving people in the background. This is the traffic location we see with our experiment. We have five keystrokes, and because the background is moving, we can see the the location actually is varying a lot. Even for the same keystrokes, we have different points. But what there's a very good point of this is that something does not change which is a relative location. Actually, this is an insight. How can we distinguish of the, the movement of the uh, uh, keystrokes with the background movement? So then we relate to our face. What about, we need it in a way, if the background changes too much, when the center of the uh, traffic locations move out of the bound of our bandwidth, then we should change the face so that we can still track the information. Let's talk about see the performance of our signal of our system in the keystroke detections. We implement it in the National Instrument product, and we have one transmitter and five receivers. Cause it's different from the setting we discussed before as two receivers. The more receiver will give you more of the readings. It can, can give you the unique, unique, uniqueness of the keystrokes. And we place the transmitter and antennas five and the receivers five meters away. We use 20 megahertz of the transmitter signal. And we use an OFM signal with 2048 subcarriers. The first experiment we are doing is that we do a training of all the keyboards. We can see that the red dots are the keystrokes we are doing training. It's about 27 keystrokes. And we ask the user to type it once, and we locate the keystrokes. And when we test, we, we ask the user to, re to randomly press a key for around 300 times. And we repeat it for five users. And here's the result we get. So for the accuracy, we can see that for more than 80 times percentage of the time, we can detect the keystrokes, and for nine, more than 80, 90 percentage of the time, we, we find the error is just within one, one key, one, it's a neighbor error, just a adjacent keys. For the same setting, we repeat it for a partial training. Here, we're still trying to track the keystroke positions for 27 keystrokes, but when we train, we only train this set 13 keystrokes. And here's our performance. It's slightly worse, but I think it's still affordable. We have an accuracy of 70 percentage, and uh, with a neighbor key accuracy, we can guarantee to be 85 percentage of the case. But uh, one thing I, I need to say that uh, I asked all the users to keep the way they're, they're typing their keystrokes. Otherwise, uh, I cannot get such a result. 
that's also something I want to say about the limitation of, of systems. One thing is the typing speed of, of the way you are typing. Well, our convergence is 80 millimeters, so you cannot type it so fast. But this is related to the way how you implement the system. We believe the, the, the delay is introduced because in our system there is a transition time from the FPG to the host side when we transit the signal, do the spectral analyze. If we can process it faster, it won't be a problem. Another is the consistency of the typing style. So, for now, we only consider the key stroke detection. We ask the user to use one hand to press the keys. What happens if people use a two hand? There's a more chance that for the same key strokes, but you can have uh, different types of hand places. In that way, probably you will fit. But we think with advanced uh, machine learning algorithm, probably we can give certain key strokes with more positions in our in our settings, then it is possible. So there's uh, multiple antenna problems. For now, we just assume there's uh, one antenna for the transmitter. For multiple transmitters, probably we need to sacrifice the uh, receiver antennas to do the beam, receiver beamforming to track to one receiver to still make the system work. But it is not. These things has not been implemented in the current system. To looking for what? Our technique exposes the potential for the weak signals that can be potentially detected in using Wi-Fi. And uh, f f it is a 20 megahertz ISM band signals. And if we can, furthermore, to push forward this work from the keystroke to the hacking, probably the user privacy can be easily hacked by the, by the other people. And I think it will be an urgent task in the future. Thanks, and we're into the questions.